Welcome to today's 3D print and today we have something interesting. A company called Ortor. I don't know how to pronounce that so I'm guessing. <laughs> um, they sent me an email and said would you like to review our printer and give us feedback. I said absolutely. This printer is I believe 260 by 310 by 305 build volume. It's right around there 260, 300, 300 and it's all linear rails. So this will be interesting. Stay tuned while we dig into it. Here's inside the packaging. It looks like they do not have their own skin for the printer. They use tape. Or is the tape on top of a plate? Because I see the Autor logo below that print bed. So it looks like they have tape on top of the sticker. Which might actually not be a bad idea for beginning users. So when they tear up the tape, they're not tearing up the bed. <laughs> Here we have the parts of the printer. You have your... Come on. Vertical gantry, which keeps knocking over on me. Your base unit, and there's supposed to be a metal spool holder that attaches up here, but I don't have one. So I'll have to look into where that would have gone. Um, this is bent, so I'm gonna replace that. Uh, one of the rods is bent, I was able to straighten it. And this coupler here is shot, it's done. I could probably use it. We'll see. If it gives me a problem, I'll replace it. Um, the base unit looks a lot like a JG Aurora unit with the plugs on the side. They do use the good quality springs. I wonder why the bottom is so open. It's got a big opening here on the bottom. Actually, while we're in here, let's make sure this is set for 110 volt. Oh, here it is, right here. 220. So you do want to make sure you flip this switch to 110 if you're in the U.S. And make this power supply is loose, too. I don't know how that's mounted. Yeah, you need a screwdriver for that. All right, now we are 110 volts. I'm wondering why they have this big opening on the bottom here. It's like a, a plastic panel screwed into the bottom of the metal frame. That's just fine, nothing wrong with that. I see the board inside there. It looks like it's all neatly wired up. Okay, there's the stepper motors. Okay. There's a breakout board on the side here. I don't know what the breakout board is for. Later on, we'll open this up and take a look inside. It looks like there is an actual bed sticker on here, and they put tape on top of it. I guess to give the beginner a shot to get going. And where is our SD card slot? Right here on the side. Okay. All right, we will get going. It looks like it's four screws. Put this on top of this, insert the lead screws into the couplers both of which are bent pretty badly and four screws to hold the rails in the side that's it that's all there is to assembly and plug the wires and of course these all this is all pre-wired this is as close as you're going to get to a fully assembled printer you plug these three wires which are all different sizes so you can't plug them in wrong into their respective ports on the side of the printer here and that's all there is to it you just plug them in right there and you're done so two screws in here to hold the rail on each side, plug the wires in, and you're ready to go. So that will be interesting. Power supply and IEC on the back. Looks like the only 3D printed parts is the blower duct for the hot end, and these decorative covers that are just covers to cover the, um, the ends of the rails. Otherwise, and also this block here, which contains the tensioning for the belt, this should not be necessary. I'm probably going to remove that. Um, that's 3D printed, but otherwise everything else is metal. It uses these interesting, they're not linear rails. I want to call them linear guides, maybe. Um, not entirely sure, but I can show you exactly what they look like. There we go. So you can see here you have an aluminum extrusion, and then inside the extrusion, one here, one here, the whole length is a steel rod, a smooth rod. And you have the, like your idler pulley for your belt. Well, you have one of those inside the ends here. And they are machined to the shape of the smooth rods. Um, so they're not square, they're rounded. And they ride along the two rods, in between the two rods. So that's interesting. We're going to see how good that is. 
Alrighty, printer is assembled. We have not turned it on yet, but I do have the X gantry leveled and the bed is all the way down. I do need to adjust all of the end stops to see where they sit. Um, components look good, but I ran into a whole bunch of little quality control issues. For example, this was difficult to install. It's crunching against something in here. I'm guessing a foam um, capture for the bottom of this rail here. It was a bit tough to get that in there. One of the rods was bent and also loose in the packaging, which is probably why it's bent. Both of these couplers were bent, but they appear to be fine. I will change them if I have to. Um, what else? Um, this was pretty badly tweaked. I had to straighten out the Bowden tube here for the hot end. It was tweaked pretty badly. Um, I'm missing the spool holder that was missing. Screws were a little tough to install on a lineup, but otherwise okay. Plugs worked fine. Although I question whether or not those pinouts can handle 40 watts that the heater is going to require. That'll be interesting to see. I do like the cable chains. The first drawing I saw showed 3D printed cable chains. These are um, manufactured cable chains. They're injection molded or however they're made, but they are, they are not 3D printed. They're nice. So they're pretty neat. Uh, beyond that, we shall see. We'll see how well these linear guides work. Because they're not linear rails, they're linear guides, which is interesting. Um, I do not like the bed plate that is underneath this. It is too flexible. See, I got a little flex there. That's not a lot of flex. It's not going to flex under normal printing loads. You don't have to worry about it vibrating and bouncing like the ANA E10 does. Because it is nice, thick aluminum. But I would like to see them beef up that plate. Um, it's hard to show you in here, but... You can see the plate is actually a a large H channel. It's basically two solid plates with a bridge in between them. And that bridge is the weak point. Um, it's thin and it's what connects to the motion system in the middle here. I would like to see that bed be one piece and thick. So the same aluminum, but all the way across. No H bridge, that's just junk. Please don't do that. Um, this will work, it'll be fine, but over the long term, I can see that eventually becoming an issue with flexing. Um, the bed is absolutely flat. They did use good quality springs. They do have nice large knobs. I mean, in general, I like what I see, but there, there needs to be a little bit of fixing going on there with the QC there. And a little bit of plastic pouring for you guys. We gotta peel off that plastic. Can't forget that, ready? Here it goes. Oh yeah, there's your plastic for you. So let's boot this thing up and see what happens.